Hello and uh, welcome to Good Friday uh, online for uh, St Barnabas and St Paul's. Now normally of course uh, we'd be meeting in church and we'd be taking part in our walk of witness on Good Friday. But of course this year Good Friday is completely different. For all of us we'll be spending Good Friday in uh, solitude and in isolation. So wherever you are and whatever you're experiencing at this time, I pray that you would experience the closeness of the crucified Jesus with you. I invite you to take time today to enter into Jesus's story, that story of desolation and sacrifice. So we're going to be uh, listening today to uh, the entire story of Jesus's uh, passion and crucifixion. We'll be reading uh, from John chapter 18 and uh, 19. We'll be having some pieces of music to help us reflect on the story of Jesus's crucifixion and then I'll be sharing some thoughts at the end. So let's pray as we begin. Almighty Father, look with mercy on this your family, for which our Lord Jesus Christ was content to be betrayed and given up into the hands of sinners and to suffer death upon the cross who is alive and glorified with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. When he had finished praying, Jesus left with his disciples and crossed the Kidron Valley. On the other side there was an olive grove and he and his disciples went into it. Now Judas, who betrayed him, knew the place, because Jesus had often met there with his disciples. So Judas came to the olive grove, guiding a detachment of soldiers and some officials from the chief priests and Pharisees. They were carrying torches, lanterns and weapons. Jesus, knowing all that was going to happen to him, went out and asked them, Who is it you want? Jesus of Nazareth, they replied. I am he, Jesus said and Judas the traitor was standing there with them. When Jesus said, I am he, they drew back and fell to the ground. Again he asked them, Who is it you want? And they said, Jesus of Nazareth. I told you that I am he, Jesus answered. If you were looking for me, then let these men go. This happened so that the words he had spoken would be fulfilled. I have not lost one of those you gave me. Then Simon Peter, who had a sword, drew it and struck the high priest's servant, cutting off his right ear. The servant's name was Malchus. Jesus commanded Peter, Put your sword away. Shall I not drink the cup the Father has given me? Then the detachment of soldiers with its commander and the Jewish officials arrested Jesus. They bound him and brought him first to Annas, who was the father-in-law of Caiaphas, the high priest that year. Caiaphas was the one who had advised the Jews that it would be good if one man died for the people. Simon Peter and another disciple were following Jesus. Because this disciple was known to the high priest, he went with Jesus into the high priest's courtyard but Peter had to wait outside at the door. The other disciple, who was known to the high priest, came back, spoke to the servant girl on duty there, and brought Peter in. You aren't one of this man's disciples too, are you? She asked Peter. He replied, I am not. It was cold and the servants and officials stood round a fire they had made to keep warm. Peter also was standing with them, warming himself. Meanwhile, the high priest questioned Jesus about his disciples and his teaching. I have spoken openly to the world, Jesus replied. I always taught in synagogues or at the temple, where all the Jews come together. I said nothing in secret. Why question me? Ask those who heard me. Surely they know what I said. When Jesus said this, one of the officials nearby slapped him in the face. Is this the way you answer the high priest? He demanded. If I said something wrong, 
Jesus replied, testify as to what is wrong. But if I spoke the truth, why did you strike me? Then Annas sent him bound to Caiaphas, the high priest. Meanwhile, Simon Peter was still standing there warming himself. So they asked him, you aren't one of his disciples too, are you? He denied it saying, I am not. One of the high priest's servants, a relative of the man whose ear Peter had cut off, challenged him. Didn't I see you in the garden? Again, Peter denied it. And at that moment, a cock began to crow. Were you there when they crucified my Lord? Were you Then the Jewish leaders took Jesus away from Caiaphas to the place of the Roman governor. By now it was early morning and to avoid ceremonial uncleanliness, they did not enter the palace because they wanted to be able to eat the Passover. So Pilate came out to them and asked, what charges are you bringing against this man? If he were a criminal, they replied, we would not have handed him over to you. Pilate said, take him yourselves and judge him by your own law. But we have no right to execute anyone, they objected. This took place to fulfil what Jesus had said about the kind of death he was going to die. Pilate then went back inside the palace, summoned Jesus and asked him, Are you the king of the Jews? Is that your own idea? Jesus asked, or did others talk to you about me? Am I a Jew? Pilate replied. Your own people and chief priests handed you over to me. What is it that you have done? Jesus said, my kingdom is not of this world. If it were, my servants would fight to prevent my arrest by the Jewish leaders. But now my kingdom is from another place. You are a king then, said Pilate. Jesus answered, you say that I am a king. In fact, the reason I was born and came into the world is to testify to the truth. Everyone on the side of truth listens to me. What is truth? retorted Pilate. With this he went out again to the Jews gathered there and said, I find no basis for a charge against him. But it is your custom for me to release to you one prisoner at the time of the Passover. 
do you want me to release the king of the Jews? They shouted back, no, not him. Give us Barabbas. Now Barabbas had taken part in an uprising. Then Pilate took Jesus and had him flogged. The soldiers twisted together a crown of thorns and put it on his head. They clothed him in a purple robe and went up to him again and again, saying, Hail, King of the Jews, and they slapped him in the face. Once more Pilate came out and said to the Jews gathered there, Look, I am bringing him out to you to let you know that I find no basis for a charge against him. When Jesus came out wearing the crown of thorns and the purple robe, Pilate said to them, Here is the man. As soon as the chief priests and their officials saw him, they shouted, Crucify! Crucify! But Pilate answered, You take him and crucify him. As for me, I find no basis for a charge against him. The Jewish leaders insisted, We have a law, and according to that law, he must die, because he claimed to be the Son of God. When Pilate heard this, he was even more afraid, and he went back inside the palace. Where do you come from? he asked Jesus. But Jesus gave him no answer. Do you refuse to speak to me? Pilate said. Don't you realize I have power either to free you or to crucify you? Jesus answered him, You have no power over me if it were not given to you from above. Therefore, the one who handed me over to you is guilty of a greater sin. From then on, Pilate tried to set Jesus free, but the Jewish leaders kept shouting, If you let this man go, you are no friend of Caesar. Anyone who claims to be a king opposes Caesar. When Pilate heard this, he brought Jesus out and sat down on the judge's seat at the palace, known as the Stone Pavement which in Aramaic is Gabbatha. It was the day of preparation of the Passover. It was about noon. It is your king, Pilate said to the Jews. But they shouted, take him away, take him away, crucify him. Shall I crucify your king, Pilate answered. We have no king but Caesar, the chief priests answered. Finally, Pilate handed him over to them to be crucified.
So the soldiers took charge of Jesus. Carrying his own cross, he went out to the place of the skull, which in Aramaic is called Golgotha. There they crucified him, and with him two others, one on each side, and Jesus in the middle. Pilate had a notice prepared and fastened to the cross. It read, Jesus of Nazareth the King of the Jews. Many of the Jews read this sign, for the place where Jesus was crucified was near the city, and the sign was written in Aramaic, Latin, and Greek. The chief priests of the Jews protested to Pilate, do not write the King of the Jews, but that this man claimed to be the King of the Jews. Pilate answered, what I have written, I have written. When the soldiers crucified Jesus, they took his clothes, dividing in them into four shares, one for each of them, with the undergarment remaining. This garment was seamless, woven in one piece from top to bottom. Let's not tear it, they said to one another. Let's decide by lot who will get it. This happened that the scripture might be fulfilled that said, they divided my clothes among them and cast lots for my garment. So this is what the soldiers did. Near the cross of Jesus stood his mother, his mother's sister, Mary the wife of Clopas and Mary Magdalene. When Jesus saw his mother there and the disciple whom he loved standing nearby, he said to her, woman, here is your son, and to the disciple, here is your mother. From that time on, this disciple took her into his home. Later, knowing that everything had now been finished, and so that scripture would be fulfilled. Jesus said, I am thirsty. A jar of wine vinegar was there, so they soaked a sponge in it, put the sponge on a stalk of the hyssop plant and lifted it to Jesus' lips. When he had received the drink, Jesus said, it is finished. With that, he bowed his head and gave up his spirit. Now it was the day of preparation and the next day was to be a special Sabbath. Because the Jewish leaders did not want the bodies left on the crosses during the Sabbath, they asked Pilate to have the legs broken and the bodies taken down. The soldiers therefore came and broke the legs of the first man who had been crucified with Jesus and then those of the other. 
But when they came to Jesus and found that he was already dead, they did not break his legs. Instead, one of the soldiers pierced Jesus' side with a spear, bringing a sudden flow of blood and water. The man who saw it has given testimony and his testimony is true. He knows that he tells the truth and he testifies so that you may also believe. These things happened so that the scripture would be fulfilled. Not one of the bones of his bones will be broken. And as another scripture says, they will look on the one they have pierced. This Good Friday, an invisible enemy has brought desolation to many parts of our world. All of us are living through extraordinary times as we see our streets deserted, churches empty, business suspended, families separated, life on hold, minds filled with fear, hearts breaking and lives lost. In a sense, we are experiencing the fear and desolation that was so commonplace in the lives of our ancestors. At some points in all of our lives, we experience this sensation of desolation. On Good Friday, it is the terrible image of the cross that speaks to us of utter desolation. While paintings and images of the cross may be uh, very commonplace today, that was not always so. There were no depictions uh, of the crucifixion of Jesus in the first few centuries of Christianity. Such was the horror and shame of the cross. Fittingly, the earliest depiction of Jesus on the cross is a crude piece of ancient graffiti called the Alexamenos Graffito, which depicts a man uh, called Alexamenos worshipping a man with a donkey's head who is on a cross. And mockingly, the description, uh, the inscription reads, Alexamenos worships his God. For me, this image says more about what Jesus endured on the cross than all the medieval and Renaissance art in later centuries. For the cross is a symbol of the many desolations that we see each day. The coronavirus raging across the world, the oppression of the poor by the powerful, the violence that bleeds into many societies across the world, the, the finality of death and the loss of loved ones. The cross speaks of death, of suffering and of pain. And yet the, the shock of the cross is not in its brutality, but rather is it is in who was nailed to the cross. For as Christians, we worship a crucified God. At any moment, Jesus could have stopped it, couldn't he? He could have come down from the cross. He could have called upon legions of angels to defend him, but he didn't. Instead, he stayed. He suffered, he bled, and he died. During uh, the Blitz, during which uh, the East End of London was, was near obliterated uh, by enemy bombing every night, the King and Queen uh, remained in London. And when Buckingham Palace itself was bombed, the Queen was able to say, at last, I now feel I can look the East End in the face. In a very small way, the King and Queen shared in the suffering of the people. Through Jesus, God experiences the full horror of what humanity can do to each other. On the cross, he had all the anger and all the hatred and evil in this world poured onto him. And like a sponge, he absorbed it all into his body. <clears throat> because of the cross, God is able to look humanity in the face, for Jesus looked death in the face. On the cross, death and evil did its worst. All the powers of death and hell were unleashed onto Jesus. It looked like he had lost, that Jesus had been defeated. The cry, it is finished, seems like a, a cry of defeat, doesn't it? It's finished. I'm finished. It's all over. But instead of a cry of defeat, it was a cry of victory. It is finished is better translated as it is accomplished. It was a, it is completed. It is a cry of accomplishment. 
At the end of a long struggle, it is Jesus saying, I've done it. It's all been completed. But what had he done? Well, he had endured all that life and death could throw at him. And even that could not overcome him. He died, but his death was the true victory. He looked death in the face and death was found wanting. All seemed lost, but as we know, even death could not hold Jesus down. It is finished. Jesus accomplished his mission. He died for the sins of the world. He died for my sin. He died for your sin. He showed that love was stronger than death. He looked death in the face and death lost. So now on this Good Friday, we need to look Jesus in the face. Jesus hanging on the cross invites us to look at him. He confronts us with a, a suffering and a dying God. And we see that his face speaks of the love that he has for each one of us. In whatever we are experiencing at this dark time, Jesus assures us that it is finished. It may seem as though darkness and evil has won, but it hasn't, because Jesus has already won the victory on the cross. So though our experience of desolation is, is real, uh, so too is the knowledge that Jesus has already won the victory. And so we are to live in our desolation with the burning hope and assurance in our hearts that the desolation of Good Friday leads to wonder and hope in a garden tomb on Sunday morning. So let's pray. As we end our time together today, let's spend a few moments in prayer. In all that you are experiencing today, I pray that you would know of Christ's love for you and that he loved you so much that he came to the cross to die for each of us. I ask that through his cross, you would experience peace and healing. For all those who are suffering and who are dying today, that Christ would draw close and sustain them in all their struggles. So we experience this time of desolation as a world. I pray that each of us would hold on to the hope of the resurrection life of Jesus, even as we pass through dark places. So standing at the foot of the cross, as our Saviour taught us, so we pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread, and forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Most merciful God, who by the death and resurrection of your Son, Jesus Christ, delivered and saved the world, grant that by faith in him who suffered on the cross, we may triumph in the power of his victory through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen.